Hi everyone, I'm Shane Stevenson, curator here at the Buffalo Naval Park. And we have an exciting video for you today uh, because we're doing a comparison video with another museum ship. Right, we've partnered with Ryan and Libby at Battleship New Jersey, and we are going to compare our engine rooms today. All right, so I hope it's exciting and I hope a little educational for you. All right, so a little bit about the Buffalo Naval Park. Uh, we were founded in 1977 and we opened to the public in 1979. We have three tourable ships here. We have USS Little Rock, CLG-4, USS Croker, SSK-246, and we also have the venerable USS The Sullivans, DD-537. And it's on DD-537 that we are standing here today and we're gonna talk about that Fletcher class destroyer's engine compartment. We're currently standing in the aft fire room. You can't really talk about the engine compartment without talking about the fire room. All right, so here boiler techs would work. There was an oil, a fuel oil tank on the starboard. There was a fuel oil tank on port and they fed these two 600 pound boilers, all right, to get water up to that pressure right, creating steam, and then siphoning it through the bulkhead here uh, into our engine room. All right, so a little bit about the USS The Sullivans. Uh, it's a ship that many people know because of the five brothers from Waterloo, Iowa. All right, so they all served aboard the USS Juno, and they were all killed in 1942. So in April 1943, when the ship was christened, obviously it made sense that Alita Sullivan, the mother of the five brothers, christen this vessel and send her on her way. All right, so this ship is a story of sacrifice. All right, so let's head back to the engine room and I'll begin the little tour. Thanks, Shane. Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Both the Battleship New Jersey and Fletcher class destroyers like the Sullivans were designed to operate at roughly the same fleet speed, around 33 knots, uh, which is amazing given the size difference between these two vessels. Whereas a Fletcher class destroyer has two propellers fed from two engine rooms and two fire rooms, which are making a combined 60,000 shaft horsepower, Battleship New Jersey has four propellers fed from four engine rooms and four fire rooms, making 212,000 horsepower. Otherwise, things are pretty similar. Much like the Sullivans, systems on New Jersey can be cross-connected if there's battle damage. The forward two engine rooms and fire rooms can be cross-connected. The after two engine rooms and fire rooms can be cross-connected. We're standing in Broadway right now, which is how you access the four fire rooms and the four engine rooms. Each fire room has two boilers, Babcock and Wilcox M-type boilers, that uh, heat water up to about 850 degrees and turn it into superheated steam at about 600 pounds of pressure. Same as the Sullivans. Let's go down to the engine room and see what's in there. All right, so I must mention that sometimes here in Buffalo, we bring engineering classes, engineering firms here, and they just go to town in these engineering spaces. It's a, it's a marvel to them, and it is amazing to think that 175 of these tin cans, uh, also known as destroyers, uh, were built for World War II. Here we're looking at the throttle board. Okay, the repeater will bring down the orders from the pilot house and what the captain wants to have happen. So this will list and show forward, reverse, and what speed. All of these dials are measuring the various turbines, pressure coming from the fire room, all right? And you'd have machinist mates here working and monitoring all of the valves, all of the steam that's coming out in all of the gauges. All right, there is also crossover. All right, so it's a good time to talk about the redundant systems on 
a Fletcher class destroyer like the USS the Sullivans. All right, we do have a forward fire room and a forward uh, engine room. All right, that actually powers the sh starboard shaft and the starboard propeller. On the tour here, when you come to visit the Buffalo Naval Park, this is the aft fire room and the aft engine room. Okay, so that powers the port side shaft and the port side propeller. So you can also cross connect steam, say from the forward uh, fire room into the aft engine room or vice versa. And that would be for if uh, the ship took damage, you could still keep the ship running uh, under duress. All right, if you want to... The throttle board on Battleship New Jersey, at least in engine room two where we are, is a little bit more cramped than the one on the Sullivans. But you've got the same sorts of equipment, a head and a stern throttles for controlling the speed and direction of the steam, um, as well as engine order telegraphs and uh, revolution indicators and all your temperature and pressure gauges. All right, so behind me is the electrical plant. Again, it's just talking about two redundant systems. There is another electrical plant in the forward engine room as well. So we have electrician mate Sparky here, and he is lighting up the compartment for visitors. Uh, when they come and tour through. So they would siphon off a little bit of steam from the fire room. They would put it into the turbo generator, which would then power the electrical plant. And again, as you can imagine on a system this complex, uh, that this needed to be monitored 24-7, uh, except when you're in cold iron and actually getting power from another ship or a pier. Follow me. All right, now we're in front of the deaerating tank. All right, this 1,000 gallon tank would collect the used steam and used water, and it would be checked for purity, and if it was pure enough, it would be recycled. As you can imagine, being in the Pacific, out in the middle of nowhere, every resource was valuable, and every resource needed to be um, check to see if it could be reused. You'll also notice the shamrocks. All right, so the USS the Sullivans, in honor of the five brothers, was one of the few ships that was allowed an emblem, even during World War II. They had a shamrock on the stack, and when you come and tour around, you'll see various shamrocks all over the place. While during World War II, sailor art wasn't very common, and it's quite remarkable that the Sullivans has shamrocks painted in their engine room. Uh, by the 1980s, it was fairly common for sailors to do uh, artwork around the ship in their workspaces, and it was even uh, sanctioned in some instances. All right, so here you'll see kind of the last part of the process. All right, the double reduction gears uh, would slow the turbines and all of that gearing going hundreds of rotations per minute and bring it down to a much more manageable tens of rotations a minute. All right, so they could they, they turn the shaft and turn the propeller. All right, so you can kind of think of it like a transmission on a car, different gearing is for different speeds. All right, one of the cool things about this uh, reduction gear was that it was constructed in Buffalo. All right, so the Farrell Birmingham Company had a, a wartime plant here in Buffalo. And as you'll see on the manufacturing stamp, constructed in Buffalo, and she came with the ship in 1977 when she arrived in Buffalo. So it's a really cool way of connecting Buffalo's wartime story with the artifact, uh, the ship herself. Just like on the Sullivans, we have a reduction gear. Now we've got three turbines. The cruising turbine is way in the back. All right, so that would be used for, as it sounds, cruising speed. Anywhere from eight knots to 15 knots when you're going from port to port and not under wartime distress. All right, so that used less fuel, used less water, and it would just keep you cruising uh, when there were no threats immediately in the vicinity. Contrary to that, you had the high pressure turbine. 
right? So the high pressure turbine was for the exact opposite times. All right, it was used for uh, while there was maritime engagements, uh, you know, torpedoes, bombs, and you needed to hightail it out of there pretty quickly or you use evasive action uh, to avoid uh, the enemy uh, armament, all right, and ammunition. All right, so that high pressure turbine wouldn't be used all the time. It would just be used uh, in those instances where you needed to evade or to get out of uh, dodge, so to speak. All right, it used a lot more oil, it used a lot more fuel and water, and so it just wasn't feasible to use it at all times. The third turbine is the astern turbine. All right, so that is allowing the ship to go in reverse. All right, now there's multiple ways you can do that. You could have, as a redundant system, obviously the forward uh, engine room also has these three turbines in it as well. All right, maybe you needed to have the ship go in reverse rather quickly and you would set the astern tur uh, turbines both to power and you can turn both props in reverse to slow or stop at a moment's notice. Or if you wanted to make a, a really tight turn, you could turn one propeller reverse while keeping the other forward. All right, and that allowed you to make a really tight turn, whether you were doing it to uh, starboard or whether you were doing it to port. All right, so that was the astern turbine that would, uh, uh, that would do turn the shaft in the reverse and turn the propeller into the reverse as well. We've only got two turbines as part of each turbine unit, a high pressure and a low pressure. We don't have an efficient cruising turbine and we don't have a dedicated reverse uh, or a stern turbine. Steam coming from the fire room first goes into the high pressure turbine and then once it's gone through that it comes into the low pressure turbine. If we wanted to go in reverse the low pressure turbine also has a stern blading in it so you could reverse the direction of the steam going into it and that would hit the astern impeller blades as opposed to the ahead impeller blades, and that would spin the shaft in the opposite direction, moving the ship in the opposite direction. Unlike the Sullivans, two of Battleship New Jersey's engine rooms have degaussing motor generators like this one. These help demagnetize the hull of the ship. Fletcher-class destroyers didn't need this, they could do that in the shipyard, and it would last for a long enough period of time uh, that they could just do it whenever they went into dry dock. Um, the battleship has a little bit more ferrous metal than a Fletcher-class destroyer, uh, roughly 40,000 tons more, and so we have to degauss or demagnetize the hull more frequently. You've seen a lot of very similar systems between these two vessels, even though there's a massive disparity in size. That's one of what I think was the U.S. Navy's greatest strengths during the war, that a number of companies were able to produce very similar equipment like this and uh, equip ships. Heck, not even all the Iowa-class battleships had the same uh, manufacturers for their propulsion equipment. However, it was all similar enough, the same sort of steam turbine systems uh, between major combatants like mass-produced Fletcher-class destroyers and heavy hitters like Iowa-class battleships that a sailor could be assigned to one one day, taken out and put in the other the next day, and have a pretty solid idea of how everything worked. All of our information is down below in the description. You have our website, you have a donate page, you have our Facebook, and our Instagram. All right, we get about 60,000 visitors a year, and obviously COVID has really decimated not only us, but other museum ships as well, and we'd love for uh, to have your support. Thanks for watching. Let us know if you like this sort of collaboration video down in the comments section. We have opportunities to do more of this in the future. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to both us so you can see the new content we're putting out several times a week and to the Buffalo Naval Park site where they're releasing new content on completely different classes of ships. New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State. Buffalo Naval Park does not. There are links in the description for ways to donate 
both to them and also to our YouTube channel. We appreciate your support.